Your home country again. It's a great experience. I was really looking forward to this competition. It's my last year as a junior, so this was a must shoot for me. We have to say goodbye, F goodbye to you after this. Yes. Uh, too sad. Well, I'm, I'm really excited that it's happening in Slovenia, and it's actually my first ever competition. Been here in 2019, the international one. So good to start, good to end here. That is a long time. How are you enjoying the chatters so far? Except for the little bit of rain, it's really nice. I mean, yesterday during qualifying we did have a few drops, but I think everybody got to put in a really nice qualification. We didn't have many wind, so it's, it's, it's nice. The weather wasn't exactly on our side, but at least it gave us a day without wind, which in Chatesh is not very often. Oh, I mean... Just looking at all the scores the archers shot, I'm really impressed with the rain we had. Still the high scores of 700s and also at recurve we had insane scores. I'm impressed by all the archers. I think it should be every day from now on, It should the, the weather should be getting better. So I think we are true through the worst and now we just have a couple of sunny and partly cloudy days ahead. I hope so. I mean... It's such a beautiful location, shooting, looking to the mountains behind the targets. If we just have some sun, it's, it's amazing. It should be good. But right now, ahead of us, there is a compound under 18 mixed team final, a bronze medal match. Yeah, we're gonna see, sorry, we're gonna see the Israeli team shooting against the Italians. That's true. That must be an exciting match going to come. Today is the first day of actually shooting finals here in front of the camera with us being commentators so it's kind of also a warm-up day for <laughs> us. It's just gonna be one hour long and probably a pretty pretty short one. I mean you already have experience doing this. For me it's the very first time sitting at the commentator's position. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> seat. <laughs> um, so we're going to start with the uh, compound under 18 mixed team. Yesterday during qualifying, the Israeli team, shooting for bronze now, qualified first, followed up in second place by the Slovakia team. In third, we have the Italian team, who is also shooting for bronze at the moment. Then followed by my home country, the Netherlands, with two very, very new archers to this field. Um, we can talk about it later. We there's in fourth, shooting for gold against Slovakia, and then fifth Iceland, who sadly we have to, had to say goodbye to in the quarterfinals earlier today. So there was quite a bit of a mix-up, and there we have already coming up to the field of play the team of Israel with their coach, and following them there is an Italian two archers, and they're followed by the two Israeli archers. So, on the left-hand side of the field, we have the team Israeli being uh, presented by Cohen Abigail and Hajar Yita. And on the right side, we have Itala, Italy, sorry, with Katarina Gallo and Fabrizio Aliosi. Sorry if we completely butchered those names. I know for the fact that Hajar Yita shot really well yesterday with his teammates. They shot a new European record. Yeah, yeah the compound team of Israeli, Israeli has shot a European record with is really impressive in the conditions they were in. The conditions were definitely hard. You you had to take you have to be careful that your side was all the time on the right place because it kept moving because of the rain. Yeah. You suddenly started hitting low and you had no idea why and then you remembered, oh it's raining. And what I got told by our archers from the under-18 that there in the morning there was a little bit of tricky wind blowing them to the right a bit. Oh, okay. 
Here we see a weather report. It's currently 14 degrees. It's not exactly warm. It's a May, it's a third of May here in Slovenia. We usually have better weather, but 14 degrees better than four. <laughs> I mean, it's it's doable. We don't have to put on coats. I mean, a little bit more temperature would be nice, but it's gonna get warm. We can't complain. Exactly. Here we have Italia starting first. Nice opener. To shoot a 10 at your first arrow does give you that confident feeling. Great first arrow by Aloisi from Italy. And Katerina is following. A little rough draw, seeing her arrow fall. Let's see if she recovers nicely. There we go, a low, low 8. I mean, it's still just getting the side marker. She just moved across almost half the field going to the final uh, lanes. From my experience, the first arrow is always the toughest way because you're still not confident that on the shooting field or finals that the first arrow is going to hit in the middle. A nice response from Hadje, shooting it 10 with his first arrow. All three arrows are a bit low, but let's see if the fourth one will be any higher. Israel, nine. Nice. There we have a left nine. nine. Israeli leading by one point in the first four arrows. <laughs> Katarina with a low axe. That's a good recovery. A strong nice one. recovery. A strong one. Going from A to shooting X really gives you that confidence back. Shooting a low eight. It's an interesting lineup for the Italians, letting the letting uh, Fabriazzo shoot first and last. I was just looking at that every single athlete here has a different dot in their side. I mean, for me, it's very personal. I really like the glowing pin. Yes. Um, I don't know what you're shooting. I'm shooting a completely black dot, <laughs> which is not really pla practical for 3D or field. But it's the same yeah. as Mike shoots. He also shoots a completely black dot. <laughs> <laughs> there we have a high 8, or maybe a 9. 36, 36. I mean, no, shooting a 36 in your first round on a finals field, the first final of a competition, so it's getting used to the feeling, getting used to standing here. Yeah, as, as I said, the first round is always like the, the hardest one. And both teams kind of had the same performance on their first round, so... Yeah, I mean, still strong. You know, you get the nerves of shooting alternate. Um, for the viewers watching that aren't familiar with archery, in the normal finals, uh, the teams get to shoot four arrows at their own pace within the 80 second time slot. There is 20 seconds for each each athlete yeah. to shoot one arrow. So yeah, in total that's 80 seconds for four arrows, which is not a lot considering they also have a rule to start um, um, the change. One athlete shoots and he has to go off the line and the other athlete com comes to the line. So there is also time being um, wasted on just walking. Yeah, and then now you're going from a normal normal final to yep. a alternate final here in the medal matches where you first shoot two arrows in a team and then the other country can shoot two arrows followed up by the first country shooting two arrows again. Yes, it's it's a new new experience for sure if you haven't shot it before but once you do it a couple of times it, it really becomes fun and you start enjoying it as it would be practice. I mean, personally, I really like the team finals. I r really enjoy them. They're so fun to do. Definitely mixed team. It's one of my favorites. Yes, I also agree. I wish we would have a girl in our team. <laughs> it's just five boys, no, four boys. Ah, that's, that's really <laughs> we have, I think, Italy starting first. Let's see. They're tied, yeah, yes. so Italy starting first again. Aloisi with a PSC and a huge dot in his side. Yeah, that must be covering the complete 10 or 
even the nine. Even the nine, probably. I mean, if that is what is giving you rest, looking at the target. But it works for him. There's a ten. a ten. Nice start from Italy. Let's see what Katrina can do. She shoots something completely different. There is a there is a circle with empty space in between. A good look of her bubble as well. Nice, great response, shooting at 10. Really good start of the second second round for Italy. Here you see a red biter dot. It's a plastic pin you put in a drilled site. <laughs> There's a low 9. Dropping a low 9. I mean, with compound the scores are so tight that every point you drop can be the point that really makes it tough to win the final. Sadly archery, especially compound archery, became more of a sport where you cannot lose. Not that you hit, but you just <laughs> try not to lose. Dropping an 8. Let's see how Italy responds to that. It gives them a good opening to... So Italy is currently 3 points ahead and let's see if they can keep their lead. <laughs> Dropping an 8. Not taking av advantage of the points dropped by Israel so far. It's really hard here with the nerves. Yes, definitely. And also in the a bit younger categories, um, there still is some time to, to get used to all the finals. I think that's a 10-9 liner. It looks like a 10. Could be a 10, could be a 9. Let's have the judge look in a minute. Those liners always make it make it a bit more interesting. <laughs> I mean, I know we have won finals on liners where you just, through the last sec second, just shaking of the nerves. Yes, Is you don't know do what's going to happen. And definitely here, in your normal finals, you can walk up to the target. Here you have to wait, wait because your agent is pulling your arrows. You can't look yourself. We usually do it that there is um, your agent gives you a thumbs up or a thumbs down mm -hmm. if you lo lost, uh, lo lost or won the match. Same. You know, those signals really help you <laughs> get the nerves down. Yes. So we have Italy leading with a 37. Let's wait what the liner is going to do for them. Maybe it's going to be a 34, uh, 74, excuse me. Israel trailing with a 71, which will mean Israel is going to start the first round. Oh. So unofficially, Italy is leading for two points. Yeah. So if you look at the brackets shot earlier, the beginning finals, Israeli first had a bye in the quarter final. Then in the semi final, they met the Netherlands, sh losing to a 151, them shooting a 149. And here we can see Italy having bye in their first round, which was one fourth final, quarter final. And they were headed against Slovakia in semifinals, which they also lost by a score of 148 against Slovakia's 151. So as we can see, there are two countries with 151 points that are going for gold. You see that's a really tight matches. They're only winning by one or two points. Really is a testament ab about the insane level compound has become, even in the youth competitions. Even in the youth competitions, the, 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 the level has gone I way, mean, way, way up. I mean, we're used to the level of the senior competitions where it's insane people shooting 700s, but then you come to a youth competition like the Youth Cup here and you see the same scores, you see the same level starting yes, to enter yes. the youth. Yesterday, when I was looking at the results when when us juniors were shooting compound, we can see here. Nice axe. Nice beginning of the of their round. It brings some confidence back. Exactly. And put the pressure back on Italy. I mean, looking at the qualification round, um, from the both countries uh, they shot yesterday. Okay. Israeli ranked number one with 1,353 points. And Italy ranked third with 1,340 points. I mean, 13 points in compound is a 
real sincere difference. There is a difference for sure. There we have Italy with a low 10. Nice response. Looking at the score, I see the 9-liner was called a 9. A bit of a long hold. <laughs> that ends up in a right 9. Let's see what the Israeli can do. They really got to put in some dance to put the pressure back on Italy. We here. can see here Hadjar shooting Spider Reigns, a Slovenian brand. Nine Israel. And there we have a left nine, nine. for from Hadjar. Also Cohen is also shooting Spider Reigns. I have an eye for those things, sorry. Shooting a X. Italy leading with four points at the moment. It does give you confidence going into a round, knowing you're leading. Yes. Nine. <laughs> Solid nine from Katerina. Let's see what Aloisi can do. can do in the last arrow of the third set. To really give him the give them the nice feel of getting comfortably to the last round, a ten would be nice. And there it is, a ten. Ten and liner, but could be a ten. Really close. Another liner for Italy. They're really making the judges work. <laughs> Extremely. So looking at the Israeli team, we have we have Yifta shooting a PZ duo dominator, and we have Evergil Cohen shooting a Matthews, I believe. Yes, correct. Two very different feeling bows, <laughs> in my experience. I mean, you're familiar with the Matthews. Um, I've shoot, shot the PSE in the past. PSE is more of like a, a bit more aggressive bow, but you can also like adapt it so it basically any bow currently you can make it feel like an other brand. But generally PSE is a bit more aggressive than Matthews. Matthews is more of a more of a comfortable, nice aiming bow. I definitely enjoy shooting it and um I believe both bo 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 bows work well. S definitely. I mean, the level every bow brand has these days, I mean, it's insane. Each year it's improving and it's becoming more, the levels coming together to a insane height. Mm -hmm. There we can see by the Italian team we have an elite bow which is also not very... It's not a common brand these It's days. not a common brand anymore, but... I know a few years ago you definitely saw a lot of elite archers on the 50 meter field, uh, which we're shooting here. Mm -hmm. uh, but these days you rarely see them. Mm -hmm. There has been like a domination by Hoyt, Botek and Matthews. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Botek. Yeah, yeah. PSE more. I mean, those four brands are really, are really big ones. Mm -hmm. But I love the small brands making his way through the, through the field. Personally, I shoot with a small brand, and it's fun seeing such a friend group come together and shooting these competitions. That's true. That also like is, is something. Here we have Israel trailing by three points and heading to the last round of the match, shooting a. 10. Good beginning. It's a nice beginning. They really got to put in the tens here. See if Italy drops some points through the pressure they put on. Nine. It's going to be a 9. Solid 9 from Abigail. Italy now has a 4 point lead going into the last round. That is some lead. But still in archery, nothing is sure till the last arrow. 
I mean, the last arrow can change everything. Exactly. Nice 10 from Italy. But a 10 does help getting there to the gold gold medal. Bronze one, sorry. So let's see what Katrina can do here. Hey. She shoots a 8. Opening a little chance for Israel. There is two points in between. You really got to put in two tens here to keep that pressure on Italy. Ten. There we have a nice ten, maybe an axe even. As they do. Last arrow from the Israeli team in this bronze medal match. Ten. And a ten. There is a 10, so a total score of 147 points. Now the pressure is on, is on Italy to make this happen. They gotta deliver at least one 10. If we have a tight score, we're gonna go to his shoot-off. Mm -hmm. There is a 9. nine. <laughs> so there is a tough, tough homework Aloisi has to do right now. A 10 to win? He has to deliver a 10 in order to win. If it's a 9, we're going to go off to a shoot-off. He shoots a back tension release. Looks pretty comfortable. And... Dropping... Was it an 8? See what the scoring says for us. It's and a 9. And it was a 9. So let let the judges confirm it. But for now, we're off to a shoot-off. Unofficially, there is a shoot-off. For the people watching who don't know how the shoot-off works in mixed team, we're gonna have both countries shoot two arrows. First, we're gonna look at scoring. If the scoring is matched, we're gonna look who has the arrow who is closest to the center. Usually athletes want to deliver two axes. That would be the perfect scenario. Then you don't even have to look um, the other opponent's arrow who has it closer, but the score, if the score is matched, then it goes by judges millimeters. And that's the thing with compound, it's so precise that even with a 10, it's 9 of the 10 times not enough. You really got to shoot at X. Exactly. Archery, especially in compound, it is a sport where mili millimeters count a lot. And I know, I don't know if that was against much as Fullerton last year where I shot a X and he shot a 10. I mean, you both shot such great rounds and you just lose on a few millimeters. On a few millimeters, going home by a millimeter. Yeah. But let's see what the judge is deciding. So, there is a rule. If a judge extends two arms, it means it's a shoot-off. Yes, we're going to have a shoot-off for the there bronze medal match. Tied score 147 against 147. Looking at the archers here, Israel is really happy with this result. It's a good comeback. It's a really well, it's a really nice comeback. I mean, the last arrows which count, they really got in the nerve, got in the focus, shot the tens, yes. delivered the points. And I mean, for Italy, it's a, it's a lot of pressure to come back from this. It's always better to be the one that managed to fight back yeah. than the one that uh, was p was kind of like beaten Israeli into a shoot-off. Israeli just ended with two tens, giving them a lot of confidence to go back in here shooting those tens again and trying to win the shoot-off through Italy now has to fight back from shooting the um, nine to, to nines in the last round. Fighting for something is always easier than fighting back something. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Let's see, we're gonna have the judge clear the range. So interesting, we just had it into the finals for this week and we already have a shoot-off in the first match. I mean, the scores have been so tied together the whole day and even yesterday. I know one of our teammates shot a shoot-off which they had to do a second round because the judge couldn't call how close it was. Mm -hmm. It's It happens sometimes and definitely does give a lot of nerves to the athletes. Yes, we're gonna have Italy start here. There is a huge crowd behind I mean, supporting Italy. 
there is really a, a big, big team coming here in Chates. I mean, Italy is always, always here with a big team, supporting East Archer every final. Yes, loudly. <laughs> Very loud. <laughs> I'm gonna need to wear earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we have the the earpods. <laughs> there is a ten. ten. That's a good start. So now it, Israel is shooting their first arrow of the shoot off. Let's see what his response is. Long hold for Israel. Hadjar with Shooting a 10. A 10, which is closer, putting Israel in the lead for Currently now. closer by a millimeter or two. But we still have two more arrows to go. Aloisi. Let's see if he can deliver a strong arrow. <laughs> Putting and in there is a 10. 10. A solid 10. Yeah. Just out of the X ring. Of Israel really had to deliver an X to win this. Basically an X, yes. Let's see what she can do. Ooh, and that she is an X. an X. That's an X. So we're going to have the judge confirming it, but for now it looks like Israel won the bronze medal match. Unofficially, Israel won the, the bronze medal. The archers are already congratulating each other. It's such an amazing shoot off that uh, we have here. This level, you see it, you see it live here where we were talking about. It's so close to each other, it's insane. Basically, Israeli is off the stage by altogether uh, three millimeters. Yes, and it's confirmed. Israeli won the bronze medal match. Congratulations to the team from Israel. And they they really fought back strongly and they, they managed to to earn a medal in a nice style. And when they needed to, they were strong and they came back. And also, a huge congratulations to Italy earning their fourth place here at the European Youth Cup. Shooting in two tens in a shoot off for a medal in bronze medal match is always more stressful than a than a than a gold one because in gold you already know you have a medal but yeah. in bronze it's when you're in the gold final you really want the gold medal but you're already certain of a medal and yes you're gonna be at the stage here in bronze it's is the deciding arrow between going home empty-handed and going home exactly with a medal with a medal i mean i rather shoot a gold medal match with the nerves then shooting a bronze medal match because I'm shaking in those. Exactly. So next up, we're gonna have the gold medal match shooting the Netherlands, my home country, against Slovakia. That's that should be a tight match. They both shot really strong in the in the semifinals. So yeah. both heading in with some great arrows that had been shot before and. Netherlands having to win from Iceland already in the quarterfinals. Yes, they, they had a, the longest way basically to, yeah. the, to the final match. Definitely. Slovakia had a bye in the quarterfinals and in, in the semifinals they won from Italy. Personally, I know the Dutch team yes. very, very well. I know the Slovak team actually pretty well. We're also great friends with them. Like Mart Martijn, our uh, male under 18 archer, this is his debut. This is his first international competition. And for Jesse, our female under 18 archer, this is her second year doing international youth competitions. So, a very new, inexperienced team coming here and showing what they are made of. Already in the gold medal match. The Slovak team, I know Simon for probably for five years now. He's really, he was really young when he started shooting well. So, He's here already for a couple of years and still in the cadets, which is pretty impressive. I mean, I know personally I entered the international stages really late. Yes. Um, which I had one year as cadet and now I'm already on my second to last year as junior here. So to come in this sport early in your career is, is so nice because you can get so many it's an advantage. fun competitions and you can learn. Exactly, like basically for me youth competitions were just a big, big, big step in my in my career. It le definitely learned me a lot and now that I'm looking back into it, I'm very, very thankful that I attended so many youth competitions because they really, really, really give you a nice start uh, I mean, that you need when you actually get into the professional 
side of archery with World Cups, with World Championships. So here we have the Slovakia and Dutch coach coming onto the stage and follow stage, followed by the archers. So on the right hand side of the field we have Team Slovakia, represented by Simon Shedivi and Sara Schindlerova. On the left side of the field we have the Netherlands, represented by Martijn Schiphorst and Jesse van der Munkhoff. Here we're certain that we're not going to be pronouncing any names completely differently. <laughs> I mean, our own languages almost. <laughs> And, of course, I mean the stylish Pickle Rick hat. <laughs> They're really enjoying standing here. I just talked to them after they uh, won the semi-final and they were shaking. They were um, uh, trading by one point to Italy going into the last round and shooting a 39 there. Oh. With those, with that pressure, with the is, pressure, is really strong. We're heading into a very exciting match. It goes for the gold medal. So we have Sara Sindarova that's gonna start the match. So Slovakia so start ranked higher, so they are allowed to choose who started. And they picked to start the first. Slovakia so ranks second with. 100, sorry, 1,349 points. There we have a 9 with or maybe an 8. 8-9 eight, liner, it looks to be called an 8. I mean, this is the sighter arrow, you're just coming from a different part of the field, going to here. 9-10 nine. Nine, liner. 9-10 nine, liner again. They really love the lines. They love the lines. They like to make it. I mean, it's a joke we pull with compound all the time. Sometimes you have that feeling where the shots go off great and they just hit the 10 and sometimes you're just brushing the lines. Exactly. It's a either a day for catching the, the line or a day for not catching the line. Yeah. Yes, he opening with a 9. Shooting a six. I mean, that really puts them in a disadvantage starting the finals. None of the team had really an amazing start, I'd say. A really strong start of tens and nines immediately. It's there must be something different with the lane. Yes. <laughs> so eight. An eight for Slovakia. Basically, if. Dutch team would right now shoot a 10, the score would be tight, so even the 6 did not hurt the, the, the Dutch team very much. So I'm looking to the field now, there's a bit of wind, which may be explaining the left and right arrows. Could be. A high 9. I mean, I don't know what your experience with backwind is, but for me, it you know, sometimes you don't notice it, and from a minute it can just completely change your shot, completely throw you off your balance. It does. It does. On this field, especially, the wind uh, does show on the on the on the on the arrows very, very, very much, because it's a long open field, and even the slightest wind can affect the arrows by almost 10 centimeters. A there we have really good recovery from Martijn. Could be just a bad setup side, or maybe his dot was there, but... I saw him change a couple clicks to his side, nothing major. I think it's the nerves. I mean, for them, shooting this for the first time, I'm not certain, but I think it's the first mixed team for Jesse also. I mean, it's you're pumped with nerves and adrenaline going into your gold final. Yes, definitely. I still remember my first final shooting before the cameras, I mean, <laughs> I was shaking. <laughs> it is a completely new experience, you like, not only shoot your own arrows, but also there is so much things going on in your head. There is a camera that you see for the first time and it's definitely not a nice first experience usually. I mean, after you're done shooting, it's your, you're amazed about 
how beautiful it is to stand on a final field. Mm -hmm. um, but whilst you're shooting, it really <laughs> gets the nerves <laughs> up high. Exactly. Scores are confirmed. A 34 for Slovakia and a 32 for the Netherlands. The Netherlands trailing by two points, which means they, they can start first. That six that um, happened on the team Netherlands, it didn't hurt the, the team very much. They're just two trailing by two points, which is not a lot. So we have Netherlands trailing by two points and they're starting first. Slovakia has a really nice sport behind them. They can be loud as well. The Dutch team is very quiet today. <laughs> Eight. In the previous match we saw a lot of low, low hitting arrows, but in this match we have most of the arrows going high. Let's see what Martijn's response on this is. Nine. Showing a nine. Both left high. Seeing Martijn put a couple of clicks in his side. The wind might change. And with the nerves you get on these finals, it's easy to put a tad bit more low pressure in your bow, which is making, making the arrow go up high. It's making the arrows go up high, yes, exactly. Slovakia shooting an 8. Not yet taking advantage of the points dropped by the Netherlands. Let's see what Mr. Shimon can do. Ten. There is a nice axe. Actually, today in the morning I was showering and there is a call from Shimon. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I answered and he was like, can you help me fix my bow? My timing is off. So I helped him out of the bathroom to fix his timing. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel improvised <laughs> bow workshops. <laughs> Netherlands starting with a nine. They really got to up their game here to put pressure on Slovakia. It looks to be a 10 from here, but we'll see what the judge has to say in a minute. We can see Sarah shooting uh, Matthews. Nine. So Vakin team is both shooting a Matthews bow. They both shoot Matthews. It's kind of a thing in Slovakia, everybody shoots Matthews. Josef Bosanski was the first to influence them and now everyone is shooting Matthews. Just follow the great star. Yes. And for the Netherlands we have Jesse shooting Nine. a pretty Oid Hoyt, Hoyt Preville. We don't see them too often on the field anymore. Not at international competitions. Pretty old bow and it's a Prevail. That was a pretty new bow the last time I remembered. But <laughs> now it's suddenly old. I mean the market <laughs> is changing so much. Yes, the new bows coming each and every year. Every company is trying their best to dominate in the in the in the bow making competition. Definitely. And we have Martijn shooting a my bow, one of the smaller brands I was talking about. Yes. I personally also shoot the my bow. It I mean it's just a small brand. It is definitely different from the Hoyt. Yes he is shooting and the Matthews, Slovakia shooting. But lovely to see these youth archers also enjoying the different mm. brands, bows, equipment. It's really the interesting. There isn't like one bow that it's all of them would prefer. It's really yeah. like... It it's a real secret. It's, there is no secret bow that gives yes, you the points. That you gives really you the points. You really got to put in the work. Exactly. So currently we have Slovakia leading with 70 points and the Netherlands training with 67 points. Still waiting on the line call from the 10 9 oh liner from the Netherlands. It's called a 10, upping their points to points. 68, only trailing with two points. With two more rounds, rounds to go. Two more rounds to go, we are exactly on the half.
So I know those two athletes in Slovakia that they had been shooting in June in cadet category for past three years internationally and currently they're both 16 years old I mean is it so starting your international career at 13 mm. it's 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 an ideal age to start and definitely if you're shooting good enough I mean I know from Mikey uh, Mike Sasher the current world number one in the seniors yep. he also started his career at 13 years old his international career it's like it's a it's probably the best age to start it, to start traveling, to start getting used to the hotel life. I mean, you get so much, quote unquote, free experience. Mm -hmm. you have so many years where you can just go to competitions, learn before you really have to perform at the big stages in seniors and mm -hmm. and juniors. We have a high eight from the Dutch team. Nine. Low nine, just out. You saw the shot go off a bit rough, a little bit of Boquan though. How uh, Chef normally calls it when he commentates. Mm. Yes, he has shot a couple high eights at the moment. Yes, still high. I'm wondering Eight. where the response will be. Isn't is the side not working? Sometimes you have the feeling of you give. I don't know how many clicks to your side. You're moving it up, 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 but it doesn't change. It doesn't change. <laughs> in, is that happening, or what's in what's affecting those high eights? Hey. Nice shot from Shimon. There is a solid X inside of the X line. I mean that that gives you a nice feeling shooting such a good X. I mean the shot looked great from here. Yes. Nine. Solid this shot. A high nine. I'm seeing a move her side. Let's hope this works. In Archer, you really have to be fast with adapting to the conditions. But Tain throwing another one high. Try to steer the bow a bit. Um, it looks like he's losing his pressure in his front shoulder. I mean, personally for me, that's what happens when I should go to a uh, throwing high bow kwando mm -hmm. moment. There we have a solid X. So nice response from Slovenia. Uh, Slovakia. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, they sound so similar. It's so <laughs> difficult. <laughs> yeah, I know. There is, there has been a lot of confusion about it. Same color of the flags. It's only the little <laughs> shield is different. <laughs> the shield is different, but also the language is different. But probably to a Dutch-speaking person, they sound more likely the same. Yeah, they're both Slavic languages, but. And I still can't understand anything <laughs> you guys are saying. <laughs> For me, it stops with Dutch and English. There is currently Josef Bosanski texting me that he's watching a live stream. He was currently two times a champion in um, the past two competitions. It's fun seeing those big archers in the senior world still watching and following <laughs> the youth competitions. Exactly. Josef... If you're watching this, we're saying hello to you. And congratulations for winning a World Cup. So we're just waiting on the arrows to be pulled and the lane to be cleared. With the Slovakia team leading with uh, 108 points and the Dutch team trailing with 103 points. Going into your last round with a 5 point lead is a hard way to recover from. I mean the Dutch team really has to put in a perfect score here to put just a little bit of pressure on Slovakia hoping that they would drop some points. Yeah, in archery, you just if you're trailing, you gotta hope for your opponent to make a mistake to, to give you an opportunity to fight back. 
the only thing you can do is just put in those stands, get the pressure up. And yes, and hope for their mistake to happen. Let's see what Jesse can do. Having a bit of a rough draw. Ten. Shooting her 10. She finally got the arrows down low. Yes, I believe that was the first 10. Sometimes there is a day when you just need a bit more time to set up your bow. And I mean, the, again, the pressure for the, these archers not having that much experience shooting these finals. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still really proud of what our team did today. They definitely fought a good match um, the whole day that they came to the gold medal match. Also, yesterday was an important day for teams. If you shot well, you had a bye, so today you had less matches to shoot. Yeah. Nine. In teams, qualifying round is a bit more important as an individual. I mean, where you end up really decides how easy or hard mm. your road is going to be. Because mm. you, of course, have a few less opponents in teams. Exactly. Because they're based on country, not individual persons. Ten. It's really easy to just get one place lower and really go up against the number one ranked or yes. two ranked uh, country. That has three very, very high quality ar archers. Yeah. So we both see in 19 points in the first few arrows. There's a nine. So Martin right now really has to deliver a strong shot to, to put the pressure on Slovakia. Shooting his last arrow of his first gold medal match. Ten. Here and is there it is, a beautiful axe, found the middle. I mean, that's a beautiful, way to, beautiful way to end. Beautiful way to end. It does give you the feeling that you have put everything you got into it. Now it's on to Slovakia to finish this final. Sarah just has to shoot a nice arrow. Nine. There's a nine. It's a good arrow. W it will get the job done. It looked like a really rough shot, but it got there. Got there. Sometimes your dot is not where it should be, so you steer the bow to left and right to correct your aiming a bit, and sometimes it does pay off. Nine. There is a nine. Slovakia winning the gold medal match. Netherlands getting the silver medal. Congratulations to both countries. They really did a good job today. I mean, the level is still insane, and seeing how they got here. Yes, I they mean, both fought a great, great match. Fo both fought really hard. Slovakia was many, many times here on the podium on Youth Cups, so it's good that their first competition of the season is just as good as they ended up last year. Yeah, and you see here Slovakia going from a second uh, ranking in the qualifications to a gold medal match in the Netherlands, fighting up from a fourth ranking yes. to a silver medal match. So Sil silver medal. Netherlands was a bit of an underdog, but still gave Slovakia a pretty hard time. Yeah, I'm really proud of uh, both countries, all the archers that shot here in the compound mixed team under 18 final. Big congratulations from us too, from Steph and Tim. It's confirmed Slovakia has the gold medal. It's confirmed for four points Slovakia beat the Dutch team. So looking at the weather at the moment, the wind has gone down. I don't see the flags moving anymore. It's no. no wind, no rain, no heat, no cold. Exactly. I, this is this is the perfect weather to shoot finals. Basically, in my opinion, currently we have the best archery weather you can possibly have. I mean, I'm from the cold country of the Netherlands, so I would like to have a bit more heat <laughs> <laughs> when, I <go> to <laughs> when I go to foreign countries, but I mean, this is great. No rain, no wind. And no sun that can also affect your, your aiming. Yeah. I, I mean, bet if yesterday it wouldn't be raining, there would be quite a few 
European or national records for sure. Yeah, if you saw how close archers got in the rain, yes. I mean, if it was just a bit better conditions, mm -hmm. it must have rained records. Mm -hmm. But that's that's archery. I mean, looking back at at the day at the qualification, it's always yeah. if if something was better than <laughs> what would have happened. That's true, and, and in I archery, it's rarely also World Cups. It's rarely good weather. So, and I think that's a beautiful thing about about archery, about the sport. It's fun when you really get the scores you want, when you get personal records, European records, if you win medals. But at the same time, it can be the next day. It can be frustrating if you don't get yes, what the you, result what you, you hoped for. You want basically in archery, I'd say that. Every good result pays off all the bad ones. So yeah. at the end of the day, you're always going to be like kind of glad that you're still an athlete in archery. And I mean, I know from how, from me, it really gives. Like last year, I had such an amazing year. Um, personally, I got the goals that I wanted, and that really gives you the motivation to come back and try even yeah. harder to up your level again it gives you conf um, it gives you also the confidence from for the next years that yes i've been there i've done that so basically those events youth youth events are the first step in building your confidence yeah. in archery because if you want to do it for a long period in your life in the future i mean it's a great place to get familiar with the finals field and youth events are definitely important competitions and also not to forget, for youth archers, uh, we both have some experience uh, shooting with the seniors, mm -hmm. uh, where um, maybe our focus is a bit more on in the season. But for the majority of the archers here, this is the biggest competition they are going to shoot in a year's time. Exactly. That's that's basically I, I believe the for European athletes this is the second biggest more mo this is the second most important competition in their year. Yeah, I mean, I, just speaking for my team, um, we currently have three archer, four archers with us who are also shooting some senior mm -hmm. um, tournaments, uh, but the rest of the team. This is gonna be be their competition of mm -hmm. the year. Exactly. Their, their point to look back on, and mm -hmm. in if you get a medal here, uh, like already three teams did, your year has been paid off. Yeah, you're gonna have so much motivation going into next competitions um, ne next next year to train even harder, fight even harder to try and get a medal again and get a medal again get more experience and basically enjoy archery from year year to come currently we're waiting for the targets to be moved back for 20 meters no sorry 10 meters because we have cadet finals on 60 meters yeah next up is going to be the recurve under 18 uh, mixed team matches so talking about the difference in category a bit um, I think the most notable difference is gonna be the bows yeah for sure so you just saw compound bows which um, are made with the controls they give you a really high arrow speed mm -hmm. and uh, draw poundage the weight in which you need to draw the bow and but in the end you get something we call let off in archery which means you go from i mean for us it's like a 60 pounds to in the end uh, personally in 18 pounds yes so you, in you the ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> so in the end you're really gonna uh, be able to keep it steady s a bit more than recurve and mm. be more precise to where now we're gonna see recurve bows um which have the full poundage of the bow the whole shot through Exactly. The more, the longer they they hold, and the more they pull, the the heavier the bow gets. So we have on the right hand side of the field, we have team from Ukraine heading against the team from Italy. Yeah, I mean, we don't target number one, the team of Italy, presented by Iliaria Tognosi and. 
Antonio Rambon. Op target nummer 2, the team of the New Great. Here we're gonna have the. We're gonna have Ukraine. Represented by Daria Koval and Bodan Ilyin. Again, sorry if the names aren't correct. And then we're gonna have Italy. Represented by Iliana Togonzoli and Rampon Emiliano. Ukraine ranked second in the qualification round with 1320 points against Italy ranked fourth in the qualification round with a hundred uh, sorry 1306 points. Only a 14 point difference in recurve. 14 points in re 14 points in the recurve is really not a lot. So from first to fourth place, there really wasn't a lot of points. It's a testimony to the level of uh, the qualifications yesterday. So Ukraine decided to start first because they were higher ranked and Ukraine they're nine. starting with a high nine. Pretty nice beginning yeah. for this bronze medal match. I mean, that's about of a nicest sighter arrow you're gonna yes, get. Yes, it's a very nice arrow to start with. And just a few clicks and you have the feeling you're on point. Mm -hmm. You're in the middle. Exactly. I mean, this is... <laughs> I mean, that's the arrow you want. That's, the, that, that's basically the start you would want to have. An X in your first arrow. Mm -hmm. Really nice beginning from Daria Koal. Ukraine 8. Uh, sorry, Italy 8. So Italy starts their first arrow in an 8. We have Emiliano shooting the first arrow. His first arrow ended in a nine. I mean, still, the height is good. So, the just feeling of the shot is on point. The feeling on the of the shot is on point. Maybe just a couple of clicks in there in the gold. Bodan with the... Ten again, nice, nice beginning. A twenty-nine. Twenty-nine is a nice way to start your final. A very nice one. Also for seniors, that would be amazing. So shooting a thirty-nine in recurve cadet, I mean that's that's beautiful. It's really nice. Daria also delivered a strong ten, so an excellent ten from her. Very impressive. Italy eight. Right eight, just out. Let's see what the response of Italy is. Italy eight. An eight High for eight. Italy. Still needing to find their place yeah. here on the final field. But in recurve, the beautiful side of recurve archery is that they, they use set points. So they can do a huge mistake and it's only going to cost them two points. Yeah, so what Tim is talking about, uh, when we shoot the compound finals, you saw that you, we had cu cumulative scoring. Sorry. We add up the points you shot every round, which in the end, the country with the, the team with the highest point is going to win. And here in recurve, you see your set points. So every round, you can earn set points. If you win a round, you get two set points. If you're even in a round, you both get one set point. Yes. So here, uh, Ukraine is gonna earn two set points, putting them in the lead. But Italy can come back next round without the disadvantage of mm. dropping six more points than Ukraine. So they just lost two points instead of six, as if if they would lose if they would shoot compound. But uh, the more, it also gives a uh, more nervous, harder way to end your final because you know if you gotta win a set or you gotta mm -hmm. even a set just to win. Basically, uh, in a recurve, it's like more looking at your opponent. What does he shoot? And you just want to shoot one point more. Yeah, to where in the compound cumulative scoring, 
you really just got to put in the highest score you can because yes. the next round you can make a mistake where it's going to cost you the points you don't want to lose. In recurve you can still shoot a miss and then still sh still win with 6-2 for example, so but in compound there is no way. So here we see Italy won against Germany and then in the quarterfinals lost against France in the semifinals, which got them to the bronze finals Ukraine. against Ukraine. Ukraine won the quarterfinals against uh, Bulgaria and then also won the uh, the quarterfinal against Israel that was ranked number one but lost against Slovenia in the semifinals that that pushed them to the bronze medal match and yeah, semifinals they lost with the shoot off with the same points just an arrow closest just an to arrow the closest to the center by a couple of millimeters both both countries shot a 10. Italy oh really nine. regaining their composure here shooting a 10 and a 9 to start their second set. Yes, that is a strong comeback. Let's see what Ukraine can do if they can continue with the tens. I mean, the level they are shooting at, it's its really insane. Ukraine. There it is a low six that made things a bit more interesting. The door is open for Italy to take back their set points. Italy really gonna need to put in the score here to get this second set. They have an opportunity, but they still have to deliver strong arrows. There's an 8. So, currently, they're still two points so ahead of Ukraine if... if They need to shoot a, a 9 to really get the set nine. in. I think that is the 9 we were asking for. Yes. So, Italy is bringing in this these two set points, making it all even again. Making it all even again, because no matter what Ukraine shoots right now, Italy still has more points. So they're gonna take the Ukraine second nine. set. So Ukraine currently has two practice arrows, arrows as we call them, because they don't count, basically. It's a nice moment to um, look at your technique, look yes. at how your shots feel and then regaining that confidence to go to the next set. Two arrows without the pressure because you already know the outcome. Yeah. So looking at the archers for a bit, we see that in the individual category, they didn't only rank high in the mixed team, but also there, um, looking at recurve under men, Italy, um, Emiliano ranked second. With great shooting, he shot with 673 points. It's the same points as the number one qualifier from Belgium, only... Number of tens got him to the second place. Yeah, I mean, that's that level, that close of a score is... Very impressive. Is impressive. And then looking at the Ukrainian archer, uh, Bodan Ilyin, he ranked fifth. I mean, th those are two top archers. Not only in mixed team, but also in the individual. individual yes. So Koval, Daria, she was also second in uh, in her own individual category. She shot 657 points. Very good score. Also for the conditions, because rain affects um, recurve archery much more than it does on compound. You have a compound, you have that little bit of extra speed with, which gives you an advantage. Yes, and a bit shorter distance. And then recurve, it really slows down the arrow. And also rain that, that adds up on the arrow, that adds up so much weight. And to people that don't are not familiar with archery, um, if your arrow slows down, it's going to have more effect from every mistake you may make. So, where normally in dry weather a small switch may only result in a 9, yes, here it, it, can, it result can result in even a 6 for recurve archery. But currently, Ukraine pushed a solid 10, a solid X to be precise. I mean, they found their way back. Bohdan really delivered a strong arrow. Let's see what Daria can do. They're fighting back with a solid 10. 10. The shot really looked really nice. 
I mean, and that could be the result of those two arrows where you can just look at your technique. You don't have to put in the score. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Italy can make a good response on it. It looked like a quick shot. A quick shot, a bit, a bit not really relaxed by the naked eye. It's an eight. It's not terrible, but definitely there they gave some up space to Ukraine. Up against Nine. Ukraine, it's. So we have currently three points of of difference between the countries. In Ukraine just has to finish it. Which sounds really simple, but yeah. <laughs> from experience we know it's when you're on that line it's really hard. It's hard. There is a pressure, there is the, the weight shooting shit. another Nine ten. Another ten. It holds the line in my opinion. There is the weight because one of those countries is gonna stand on podium and the other the other one is gonna go home with empty hand empty hands. Again that extra added pressure of the bronze medal match. Mm -hmm. Let's see what eight. it's an Ukraine. eight. So we're gonna need to see what the liner does for Ukraine and Italy has got to put in Italy two tens currently to has the hope to deliver two tens plus they have the hope that a judge will will decide that the arrow from Ukraine is gonna be a nine to put it all square off the chart okay so there is an eight that puts them kind of away from splitting the set so yeah, so Ukraine is gonna get to the two set points here and go going into a lead. Emiliano with his practice shot. Ten. Ten. Nice job. It's a nice confidence boost to go into the last round knowing that they are gonna have to win that set to force a shoot off. Yes. So for the next set, the judges are gonna confirm the scores, but for the next set, Ukraine only has to play even to win, mm -hmm. and Italy has to win the set to force a shoot-off. In the background we can see the Chattish Eye, as we can call it. Not London Eye, but the Chattish Eye. It's a wheel with 24 little uh, buckets that people can go inside and see the Chattish from the air. I think that's a beautiful thing about these uh, international archery competitions, you're always in an area where it's beautiful, it has history or there are special landmarks from that country. Yes, basically with archery, also you and me have basically seen a big, big part of the world. Yeah. But Just thanks to our archery. It's such an amazing like experience that archery brings not only with sport but also like the, the trail part of it. I mean, last year I really upped my career and I've gone to I don't know how many countries seeing there the beautiful cities we are we get to shoot in mm. the landmarks I mean we were in uh, Korea last year which is for archery is a bit of a holy grail I yes mean, it's, it's definitely an, a place or a country where archery is a really huge thing yeah I mean um, there at least we got there and we also, because we had Mike with us, the r world number one, yeah. we got ended there like some kind of huh. gods almost. Yes, and definitely. Mike does bring a lot of attention yeah. wherever you go with him. It, it there is an eight from Italy, a right one. And a nice X followed up. Followed by a really good arrow. I mean, that does put the pressure on Ukraine because they need to shoot at least the same amount of points at least the same amount of points as Italy to not go into a shoot off Archer is sport of like in your head calculations shooting a 9 just out of the 10 I mean that's still a really nice shot <laughs> yes nice shot just out Daria so if you see the scores going up to the day in the early morning we did see the scores vary a lot but here they're very all very beautiful X that's nice a great shooting from Ukraine definitely like either an X or a just out 9 so let's see what Italy can do in response here to put on that pressure it's a 9 for their f second to last arrow Iliara delivered a fairly strong arrow Still putting the pressure on Ukraine that still has to perform great in order to win. 
if they want to keep that pressure, they really got to shoot Dan here. N looks not happy with the shot. It's going and into the into 8. Right Ooh. 8, just out of the 9. Bit of unlucky with catching that line. It is. But that's archery, sadly. It really opens up the chance for Ukraine to win this round. Nine. There it is, a 9 Ooh. just out. Nine. Another so just out. That makes it a 7 to win? An 8 to win, sorry. An 8 to win. Or no, a 7 would do it as well yeah, because, because there's then you get an even score. An even score and in recurve team finals a 5 is enough to take the mm. lead. And a 7 to there win. There is a 7. So 35, 35, that believes that that means that Ukraine did tie up the the last set and managed to fight for the fifth point that was enough to take the lead. Yeah, the judges are going to confirm the scores now. But for now it looks like Ukraine won the bronze medal with match with five set points against three set points of Italy. A very great performance from Ukraine. Maybe the last arrow was a bit of a nervous arrow. I mean, it's always you know what you got to shoot. Yes. And you really want to deliver a strong shot and then, I mean, the nurse can get to you really quick. Bronze medal matches are always harder than gold ones. Yes, it's confirmed Ukraine won the bronze medal match. Ukraine really shot shot amazing. They, they were in the zone right from the start and definitely deserved this medal. Yeah. If you look throughout the day, I mean, their level was so consistent and high. I mean, if you look at their first final of the day, they shot 40-40-37. 40-40, that's I mean, an impressive. That's, that's an impressive score. Eight tens in a row. So we're going to see the archers leave the stage and everything's getting ready for the gold medal match. Now we're preparing for the gold medalists. Well, the candidates for the gold medal to arrive. So we're going to see the Slovenian team going up against the France team in the gold medal match. That's a home home country fighting against a huge national team, basically. I mean, this is your team. Can you tell anything about the archers from Slovenia? Yes, they're both young. <laughs> <laughs> they're both young and they both already shoot amazing. There is also quite a few teammates that came to support them. I mean, both of the countries here with a pretty large team. Yes. When there is a country happening in your own 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 um, country, uh, there, when there is a competition happening in your own country, there is always a good chance that you're gonna you're, you can bring a lot of athletes from your from your home country because it's also cheaper there is also better experience when it hap when it's happening on home soil yeah. so mean, we always bring a lot of people to the home competitions yeah and france always being one of the biggest teams at the competitions france is one of the biggest teams no matter where they go archery in france is very very big i heard somewhere that they have Per capita, one of the most archers being signed in the association. So there's, I believe, 4,000 of them, I heard somewhere. It's a huge number compared to Slovenia. Slovenia has barely, barely 800, I believe, or not even that, not even that. It's a really a sport for <laughs> dedicated archers. Yes. And for... Um, there's a little amount of archers, if it doesn't sound bad i mean it's really amazing to see how big of a team you guys can put here we are a small country so our main promotion is basically sports so yeah so we're the sport in slovenia is pretty important for us so we're almost going to go into the gold medal match the last medal match of today of this morning mm -hmm. uh, for the recurve under 18 mixed team we're going to have France, who ranked first in the qualification round with 1,322 points against Slovenia. The home country ranked third in the qualifications with 1,309 points. And here we're going to see the coaches and archers enter the field of play. So on the right hand side of the field we have, coming up to the stage, Oskar Gnidovets. That's 16 years old. 
And on the on his right side we have Tinkara, also from Slovenia. Her surname is Kogel Cardinal. So for France we're gonna have Jules Pedro and we're gonna have Lialin Gregoria. Sorry if you butchered their names again. <laughs> So they had a long way to go to the mixed team gold medal match. It's a really large category if we look at the other mixed teams. There is a lot of teams. Today. There is a really lot of teams. Both had to shoot the 1-8th final. France won it against Estonia uh, with a 6-0. Going into the quarterfinals against Azerbaijan, winning with a 6-2. And then really had to put in the work against Italy, this barely winning it with a 5-3. This is their fourth match of the day, so definitely had a lot of practice hours <laughs> for this match. It also does mean that the arms must be sore, we already lost a lot of energy through Could the nerves be. in they the other finals. They also did a lot of steps, jumping on and off the line, yeah. giving space to their teammates. And Interesting to see how they have recuperated from it and how they're gonna shoot now. So we have a we're gonna have a right eight starting the match from France. France is shooting first because they ranked first in the uh, they ranked higher in the qualification round. That's very interesting. We have two left hand side archers competing for the same country. I mean my my lefties, I I'm, I'm proud of them. Proud of them. <laughs> So <laughs> shooting at ten. Also on the line uh, right. They and two right hand side archers competing for Slovenia. They I had mean, a deal. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been decided beforehand. <laughs> Strong ten from Oscar. We don't see a lot of left handed archers in the field. I know from the compound side I'm one of the few. You're one of the rare ones. I mean, it pays off to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> Eight. Also shooting an 8, both opening with an 18 points in their first two arrows of the first set. Both boys shot 10 and both girls shot an 8. Also planned, as it seems. Nine. There is a solid 9, nine. A good recovery. I mean, to get your first set with these points is one of the best I think we've seen today. Definitely mm -hmm. Nice, nice beginning. Let's see if... Jules can finish the shot. Finish the set. Long hold. Going into the X. A 20 and 37 to start their first set. I mean, it puts some pressure on Slovenia. Owning be being allowed to drop one point to share the set. To share the set, exactly. There is a 10 from Oscar. Nice shooting. Still high, you see him move his side just a little bit. So let's see what the final arrow of the first set for Slovenia is gonna bring. It, it looked shaky, a bit shaky, but, but ended up in a nine. So that means that they are splitting the points. Both getting one set point, putting them even into the next round. To explain the rules a little bit, there is in Rika Archery we call it a set system. That means that if a country or an athlete shoots better score in that set, he gets two points. Um, and his teammate that shot less points gets zero points. But if they shoot the same score, then the, the bo both athletes get one point each. So Slovenia also had the same long way as France. They shot the 1A final against the Netherlands, winning with a 6-0. After that, they won the quarter match against Poland with a 5-1, sharing one set point, winning the rest. I mean, from both countries, the first two finals were extremely dominant, extremely nice shooting. And then again in the half final against Ukraine, they ended up doing a shoot off, both shooting 19 points, having to win with an arrow closer to the center. I mean, that's impressive. High quality of archery we can see here. Both countries trying to fight who can scream the hardest. 
This is what's fun about finals. It's nice to see the finalists laugh on the on the line. They're enjoying the support they get from their teammates. Even from our commentator position, we can hear it very clear. Yes, through the headphones, there is a lot of sounds coming from the people cheering behind. So let's see what France first nice air going to be. Solid then. Solid then. It looked great, ended great. Leoline. That's how you want it to go. Let's see what Jules can deliver. There is a high nine. A high nine. Good yeah. start. Looking Contest. at the flags, I see the wind picking up a bit. Also, wind going from behind. So, I mean, those high arrows, they can be just a bit of wind taking you out of your balance. Yes, we're sitting in a studio that's basically a tent. So, also, we can feel the our walls moving a bit. So, Savinia opening with a nine for the first arrow of the second set. I like the flag she has in her quiver. Um, camera, you can see it a little bit. Yes, it is moving. Yeah. There is some wind. Nice ten. X. Both again tight in the first two arrows. Very of tight the set. match. Both countries really at the same level. Looked nice, and it is ten. It is a ten. R she looks really steady there. The bow is steady. There aren't, there isn't any kind of bow on though. She's there really in her place. There aren't any movements after the shot. It's just like where where the shot opens, the arrow goes. Bronze. Nine, line up. So we have a liner for France. We're gonna have to see what the judge is gonna say about that. Definitely getting some pressure on Slovenia, needing to shoot two tens here to possibly get the yes, set. Yes. S solid tan from Oscar. We can hear in the background Slovenian teammates supporting each other. There is a nine. So that means that Slovenia has to hope for France's so 9 to be a 9, not a 10. The liners are going to be de deciding for how the set points are going to be divided in this round. That's always, always nerve wracking. I mean, you can't do anything, you're just waiting. You see the French archers here picking <laughs> at their lips and really getting those nerves. What is it going to be called? I mean, they are smiling. I mean, you see that the archers are really enjoying to shoot here, to get on these final stages and compete for a medal. Youth competitions are always fun. It's like whole another, I'd say, vibe here at the youth competitions as it is on the senior ones. Here it's like more kids having fun, basically, and, and Ev everyone is trying to have fun. Everybody is enjoying it, and of course, oh, with the senior, you have the extra the added pressure line of a lot of archers eight. being full-time archers and really need to make a living. Doing yes, archery you make a living doing archery. That's ma many times that comes into your head. Okay, if I do this, I'm gonna get that, and that's the least, the the last pretty part of archery. Here, it's pure happiness. Everybody here does archery for fun. Yeah, and, and also for your for your future. I mean, everybody wants to get the medals, but it's still there is no pressure of having to. Everybody's yes, having fun. Yes. If you look in the hotels, I mean, all night all countries are playing games together. Exactly, and it's it's great. No one has kids at home that they have to earn money for. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> looking at the scores, the nine ten line from France got marked up to a ten getting their two set points, putting them in the lead 3-1 to one against Slovenia. Slovenia seven. seven from Oscar. A bit of a rough shot. They have to put the pressure back on France because if they lose this set point, they can end up losing the, the gold medal. Yeah. Slovenia really got to Slovenia either eight. tie or win this set. Either tie or win to have any chance at winning mm. the gold medal. Here. Right now they did not do themselves a favor with dropping five points into arrows. 
But at the same time, it's a pressure for France to get on here and shoot the scores because if they win this, they get a gold medal. They get a gold medal. It's so much pressure from either point you're standing. Mm. France is definitely here in an advantage, being down just for a point. Ooh, that looked like a really rough shot. Still, Still. going into the nine. We saw him pulling back his bow. And correcting the arrow, correcting the shot. It almost looked like he didn't go through the clicker properly. For people not familiar with recurve archery, the bows have a clicker on them, which nine. indicates when they're at full draw and when they need to release. So basically in recurve, you don't have a back wall that's stopping you from drawing your bow. Um, to the perfect place, so the clicker tells you when the bow is at the perfect place, and when the clicker clicks, that also means that you have to have to let the arrow go. So Vinya dropping two nines, which really opens up the position for France to finish the, this match. The door win. is open; it's widely open. Five point lead going into the last two arrows. Nine. There is a nine, a very very nice shot. So this is a seven to win this match and get a gold medal. Let's see if he can hold his nerves. It looks strong. Looks like a nice shot. And is it 10? 10. 10. Very nice shot. France winning the gold medal. Very high, very high level of archery from Team France. And big congratulations to both of the team fighting. A long way to get here and both getting a medal and in in this category France is the champion. I mean just looking at these four mixed team finals we had this morning the level is incredible and beautiful to look at. Really very very, very nice. A nice start to the European Youth Cup here in Kates. They both can be very excited for their season. Basically, we're still in May, so the season, the this outdoor season has practically just begun. And they already have a gold medal around their necks. I mean, for the youth, this is the starter. And talking for the European countries, mm -hmm. we have one more Youth Cup in Switzerland and then... The World Championship. The World Championships for the lucky archers who are allowed to go. Mm -hmm. So, in youth categories this year, we have basically only three competitions. Yeah, so it's a short season, bigger than last year, because we still were recuperating from the corona situation. Yes, there still wasn't that many competitions. So we, we get one more competition, <laughs> but it makes it fun and it makes every medal worth so much more. Exactly. The, l the more competitions there is, the, the less worthy are those medals. But here the pressure is re really on because they don't have that many opportunities to get them. You only have three competitions to get your medals for that year and get your foot in your archery career. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At the international stages. Yes. So everything is getting put up and ready for the medal ceremony. Medal ceremony. For the under 18 mixed teams, compound and recurve. The still, the weather here is perfect. As I said before, this is practically the best weather for Arch you can pro probably get. Basically, there isn't any sun that could affect your aiming, that could shine in your your eyes, and make it difficult to 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 look t towards the target. There isn't any wind that would affect your aiming and your arrows in the flight. And also, there isn't any rain that we had yesterday that made it difficult for us to to adjust the sides because everything was hitting low, the arrows were wet, the string was heavy. It was a tough day, but still the results, the results were really, really high. Yeah, I mean, besides from a few drops and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of wind, I mean, this is, this is, this is what you want shooting these finals. It is on the spot. And you can see it from the level of archery you have seen today. There is nothing weird. There is no wind that blows all the arrows right or left. Mm -hmm. It's really the best archers shooting at their best level in the best weather. It's a day to show off. It's a day when you can shoot some high scores. Yep. 
all the scores are confirmed. Ladies and gentlemen, please. We have the compound mixed teams under We have cadets in compound division coming up first to the stages. So I can hear Tim is a veteran in the sport almost, <laughs> still calling the newly called under 18 category cadets. So last year, World Archie made a, a change to the naming of the categories. First, we had the under 18 was called cadets. Yes. When I started <laughs> Archie, I was still a cadet. Yes. And now, um, more of a age category. Now they turn it to under 18 and under 21. Instead. There was a lot of confusion because juniors sound younger than cadets, so yeah. everybody was confusing. Everybody was confused. <laughs> Basically, the juniors were the older ones, and the cadets were the, the small ones, the young ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, everything is getting ready, and we're almost on to the medal ceremony for the compound under-18 mixed team. It's fun to see all the archers stand in line here, and see their see the other countries, the, the other archers from their country, waiting and watching for the medal ceremony, cheering on and celebrating the accomplishment they already did at just the very beginning of this competition. We still have four more, three, three or four more days of shooting. Yes, there is still a long, long way to go to till the end. And Only this afternoon we're going to the under 18 category, oh sorry, under 21 under categories. Under twi no, 21, yes. And then tom <laughs> tomorrow we're shooting the individuals. Tomorrow is a day for individual finals, I believe. So Not finals, but matches. Yeah. Elimination rounds. Elimination basically. rounds. We're gonna tomorrow we're deciding who is gonna going to shoot the gold and medal match sorry, gold and bronze medal matches of all the age categories exactly. individually. So today is Wednesday and we're done with the qualifying round which gave us all the position to start with. So the better you qualify in qualification round, the, the, the easier way you have to get getting towards the gold medal match. And we are lucky enough to get a buy for the first round. Yes. Which just eases off the amount of uh, work you've got to do in the eliminations. Here we have the current weather report. It's currently 14 degrees with kind of high humidity. <laughs> it's 85%. <laughs> it's currently showing that it's raining, but in reality it's a bit maybe at drop of rain from time to time so the wind is coming from north east, east side but there isn't much of it yeah. talking about the rest of the week tomorrow we're gonna have the individual eliminations that we just said then on friday we are going for the team uh, matches where we're also going to be live streaming the bronze mm -hmm. and gold medal matches. Yes. And then on Saturday it's the big individual final day where all the bronze medal matches of uh, the individual categories are going to be shot. Saturday is the main day of this event. Only the art athletes that manage to, to come clean and win most of their, their matches are going to shoot on Friday, on Saturday. So here we have the medal ceremony of the under-18 compound category. In third place we have Israel. So Israel is presented by Kohn, Abigail and Hadjar Yita. They shot really well, they managed to... They managed to qualify first actually. Yeah. I mean, the level they shot at was really, really nice to look at. Yes. Second place. They're both really young and I managed to shoot against Hita for quite a few times and he gave me a hard time every single time. And here in second place, my home country, the Netherlands, with Jesse van der Munkhoff and Martijn Schiphorst. Getting the silver medal presented by they're very young, they're really very young yeah. and they really shot well. And for the first time shooting together and for uh, Martijn, his first international competition, already getting a silver medal, it really promises a bright future. Basically for majority of people, just the experience of first time, like trying teams, it's something new, it's something you have to think about, it's something you all the time 
have to be careful that you don't do any mistakes because you can get disqualified if you do a mistake. Yeah, it's it's really different. And here for the gold medal, we have the Slovakia team being represented by Sara Schindlerova and Shimon Shedivi, my great friend, who did well this week, as always. As long as you fix his bow. Yes. <laughs> Called no, me and disturbed me. Meanwhile, I was showering in the morning. <laughs> oh, it's fun to see how every archer tries to help each other. I yes, mean, yes. With equipment, there is always there is an there is a basically a problem without the end. Just in. So here we have the national anthem of Slovakia. And a warm round of applause for the athletes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going for the medal ceremony for the recurve. So now we're going to see the recurve under 18 mixed team medal ceremony. The archers are clapping and the athletes are walking on the stage. Medals will be presented by general manager assistant of Chenwet Chavez, Mr. Marian Pachet. So on the podium. We have third place, Ukraine third being third, Ukraine, with they qualified Kovac. second, Koval Ilin. Daria and Ilin Bodan. They shot her exceptionally well in in the qualification round. They qualified second, as I said, and also in and in the finals. It looked so strong and calm. I mean, it's it, it was a really really nice to look at. They started extremely well. They also managed to shoot consistently throughout the match and secured themselves a bronze medal. And here for the silver medal, your home country. My home country and home home soil. It's Oskar Gnidovets and Tinkara Kogel Kardinar. They shot very well in qualification round. They qualified fourth. Sorry, third, third. <laughs> <laughs> They, they managed to sec secure their position and even upgraded it by a place. And then France qualifying in the first position and finishing it in the first position. We have it represented by Jules Pedro and Lialin Gregorio. It's a tough, tough place that, you, that you're defending your first place from qualification rounds and they managed to secure it and take the gold. I mean, this is the, the ideal result you wanted this week. Mm. Qualifying first, Ladies ending up first in the finals. The on the first stage of the Youth Cup in Slovenia. Here we have the national anthem of, of France. France.
And a warm round of applause for our athletes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This was so our work for this morning morning shift is done. We managed to to come to the end of this um, under 18 mixed team finals. I want to thank everybody for watching these four finals and I hope to see everybody back again this afternoon for the under 21 mixed team finals. It was a fun morning. We saw a lot of high quality matches and we also had a lot of fun commentating this. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the afternoon.